Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be featuring not one, but two Godot plugins. These are both actually really cool, and the reason why I'm featuring both is, well, the sample for one made use of the other, and these two have really good synergy. So what we're looking at today is a plugin for creating rivers in Godot, and one for creating height maps slash terrains. Uh, so what you see in front of you, this is the uh, river example running, uh, gives you an idea of how it works. We're going to show you this kind of from scratch anyways, but uh, this is their own demo. I will tell you how to get this all up and running but you can see this river kind of runs along this spline here uh, so you can have these water effects you see here it's hitting and rippling off of uh, 3d objects in the scenes here we are nicely defying gravity for a little while like so uh, and then we just kind of follow this river but you see as we come through these bends and turns the uh, water and texture here uh, bends accordingly so that is what we were looking at today we're also going to look at the tool that was used to create uh, this landscape that we are in uh, so without further ado let's go take a quick look at both projects the first one that we're looking at today is called water gen godot this is what is responsible for creating that river out of the spline that you specify entirely open source project uh, implemented basically entirely in GD script uh, you can um, download it and use it at your whim it was recently updated which is why it became uh, a you know on my radar, I guess you could say. Uh, you go ahead, just clone this guy down. If you want to use the other one, um, if you want to check out the project here, basically clone this project and then also clone this project. The other one we're looking at today is the Godot Height Map plugin. This is what allows you to do the train. Uh, one thing to note here makes me a little apprehensive, and this is a, a note to the uh, creator if you happen to watch this. Uh, you don't have a license attached right now. Uh, so if you want to use this, I would highly recommend reaching out to the author and making sure that there is a license finally attached but this is what allows you to do the train uh, creation stuff so first we got the water generation second we got the train generation you want to check these out literally all you need to do take this guy down clone it uh, you can open the example projects in there but what you also want to do is take this guy down here clone it as well and then copy the add-ons folder this guy right here into the add-ons directory of the other project and you are good to go and then once you've got that loaded here is your scene so now we're going to show you how you use these guys so we're going to go ahead and create a new 3d scene like so. Okay, so first we're going to start with a little bit of train that we're going to draw our river on. Creating a train is pretty straightforward. You add it as a new node. Oh, also make sure that once you uh, download both these projects, the plugins, make sure that waterways and height map train are both enabled like that. Uh, and once you have done so, we're going to go ahead and say uh, new. And the first one is a train object h train available right here go ahead and create that guy there it's going to have a couple of requirements specifically it needs to have a data directory i'm going to actually just steal the other data directory here uh so test assets uh, i believe it was t data they used all right so we'll use this guy right there to start things off that gives us a normal map to start with we're, we're basically overriding our other project at this point in time so now that we have that done and our train is specified you can see up here you have a number of brushes for working with your train but first what you're going to want to do is actually create some so go ahead here you can import in a height map height maps are just grayscaled maps um you can see actually an example of one down here or we can generate a new one you got a number of different controls for uh how it will look you can left mouse button to uh offset that guy around let's actually keep that at zero and zero um but what you're going to probably want to do is change the range height so let's say 10 and then scale is let's say 50. all right uh so we're good with that so our base height no reason to be in the negative so we'll start at negative 10 so that'll be far down below the plane so there is our basic terrain as we've created you got a number of different options here you can have erosion over time and so on uh, you can also randomize the seed and this will give you just a completely different result each time you run through it and then we're good with our project so there you see we have now created a pretty small simple train we obviously could have created that as bigger uh, you can change the chunk size of each piece of this train as it stands uh, but what I'm going to do now is pick one of the tools up here so you see here you got things for raising and lowering the train we're going to start with raising the train and we'll just go ahead and start painting and there you see that's kind of uh the gist of it um uh, so uh i hate it being below the grid because it makes it harder to see but you basically can start going around and painting it that way we also got the ability to to lower the terrain down like so uh next up you're going to probably want to go ahead and start actually making your train look something like train so come on down here you've got various different options down here so we've got the texture set editor that we can load in 
So we're gonna create a new texture here. We're gonna load that in. So once again, I'm piggybacking on the water examples assets here for this particular version. So train textures here, you're gonna notice we have a dirt layer and a grass layer and a river layer here. Let's bring the grass one in here. So this is your albedo and bump map layer right there. So we'll bring that in, it automatically fills both in. And the normals and roughness are also together. So there we created the uh, grass train right there. Let's create another one here. And that will be our dirt. So that's dirt. And then dirt doesn't have, uh, oh no, it does right there. Okay, so there's our normal and so on for the dirt. And then we'll create one more here and this will be our pebbles or so our riverbed and our riverbed normal available right there. All right, so now we have multiple different textures we can go ahead and paint and work with. So there's our weird area that we, we enhanced. What we can also do, by the way, we've got other brushes available up here for smoothing, uh, erosion, leveling, and so on. So what I'm going to do is basically we're gonna smooth down. Also, you've got control over your brush size down here so you can make your brush much bigger if you wish. So if we wanna kinda of get rid of some of those jaggy edges I created over time, we can. Okay, so we can also now come over here to the texture paint mode. Uh, we will pick our, uh, we'll do our our uh, stone texture. We'll follow this weird path I cut out here by accident. And we'll bring our brush down quite a bit. Uh, you can also have the, I think this will determine what level of slope uh, the wheel or will not draw on. So if there's an edge or whatever. And then you can basically come in here and you can start drawing your rock textures. One thing I haven't figured out how to do is UV tile this image so that you know I want it to paint at a higher resolution than it is. Uh, there's got to be a way to do it. I'm just not 100% not certain what it is. Or I could, I guess, open up the source image and clone it and you know make it a finer resolution or whatever. But there's probably got to be a way of, of tiling uh, the result. So you go, you can see paint it. And let's go around the edge here. We'll, we'll increase our brush size slightly. And we'll add some dirt on our riverbank. Like so, all right, we're good, we're good. All right, other side, add some slightly off-center dirt. All right, there we go. So now we've got some dirt in. We can add a little patch of dirt over here if we wish. And that is kind of the idea. You've got a couple other abilities here too that are actually kind of cool. We can actually take this guy right here and we can actually cut holes directly in our train. So if you want to you know, fall directly off the world, you can do so right there. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is carve a bit of a, an impression in where these stones go. So come on down here. Let's drop the lower of the brush down. And let's just make sure that that's that's sinking into the ground. All right, there we go. So that was where we'll ultimately run our river. I'm not gonna run the entire river, but here you can get an idea. So this is the height and train map tool. So this is what you can use for creating landscapes and trains and everything else in uh, the Godot game engine. The cool thing here is also you can take this stuff, um, you can bake it out. We can also have this generate uh, the collider, which is what I'm going to do next. This is going to create the collision mesh for our surface. So if you're using physics in your world, it will know where everything is. But you'll notice we had a couple of other options here as well. We can actually have this generate a polygonal mesh instead of a height map. Uh, uh, so then we can have an object, like a, a 3D mesh instead of that. And again, it's a heavy process to do so. We can also export out our height map. So basically this grayscale image that we were creating, we can export that out and we can use it in other game engines or other tools if we so wish. Okay, so that is our uh, first uh, demonstration here. This is the terrain landscape tool. It's actually pretty powerful, capable of quite a bit of stuff. So now what we've got down here is the other part of our demonstration. Is it river? Yeah, river. So I'm gonna search, create a river node, like so. And now, where did you get created? And now we're gonna to have to do a little bit of positioning here, like so. So let's put our, we're gonna start our river somewhere in our impression here. So let's lower that guy down, like so. And what you're gonna notice is the river is actually being created using a series of wide splines. Let's raise that up a little bit. So you can see that a number of spline control points are actually kind of getting away in my manipulation here. But there you can see immediately our uh, our water is already in effect. So what you're gonna what you can control here, you got your central point. This is the midpoint of your spline, like that. So we're kind of filling our our basic river gap to start with, and then you can grab each one of these control points at each level of the spline and modify the width accordingly. So there we see, so just kind of fill it so it fits your. Uh, your world as you wish it to fit. And now it's a matter of basically starting to populate our world with water. So what we're going to do now, you're gonna with the river tool selected, you're gonna see up here we have a couple of different options. We also got the ability to have it snap to the collider, so it should snap to the terrain as we paint this thing. And we've got tools here for selecting control points, adding control points, and deleting control points. So what I'm going to do is add new control points, and we're just going to follow the river. 
Like so, and I'm not gonna do a ton of them because it basically would require me to tweak each one as I go. There you see we're creating rivers as we go. So I'm gonna go back here to modify tools. I can pick an individual point and then we can you know size it so that they fit perfectly. And you're seeing as I'm moving things around, it's tweaking the flow of the water. We're also having some a bit of collisions going on as the water is hitting the surface. So you just basically wanna stretch your river out so that it fills uh, the container that it's in. You've also got the ability to change the verticality. So I could grab this guy and move it up and down like so, which you can create some really weird kink effects out of that by accident. But there is your basic river object being created. So I'm gonna go back over here to my river. You're gonna notice we've got a bit of a warning here saying that the uh, flow map has not been generated yet. Anytime you want, you basically go here to the river and say generate flow map. So this is gonna do, so now you see we've got um, foam when it's hitting the walls here and then nothing in the center here. So that's kind of what that is handling. And the cool thing here, is we can bring in external objects. They have a nicely set up rock for us. I'll bring a rock into the world. And if I open that rock up, oh, I didn't mean to parrot that there. Okay, let me just, let me undo that. Put it right here, do the same thing. All right, so bring that rock in. We'll look at that rock now. You're gonna see here, it's basically just a static body uh, with a collision shape around it. Pretty straightforward setup for the most part, but we can bring that rock into the world. There it is over there. Let's just bring you over here. down, down, not that down, up. <laughs> right, there's our rock, I can bring it right there, and we got a rock in our river. Now, of course, we're gonna want it to be slightly submerged, but not completely, hey, yeah, that worked out well. All right, let's just bring that up slightly. All right, so there you see, now our river is interacting with our rock. What I can go back to is select the river again, and then we will regenerate the foam map, and you're going to see it is now hitting and interacting with that rock. So you can have objects that interact with the river object that you created, and that's a pretty cool effect. So with river selected over here, let's go and take a look at some of the options we can do with the river. So we saw terrain in depth river. Uh, a lot of what you're going to do is on the material. So we can change out the speed of our river and water. We can, we can jack that up so we could have it quite a bit faster if we wish. Uh, steepness multiplier, I think this is how verticality is affected. You can actually change out the water texture itself. But what you're often gonna wanna do is just kind of do a tint to the albedo channel. It's right here, we got kind of brownish water. We could switch this out to make it a bit more blue. And there you're gonna immediately see the effects now. Water isn't actually blue, so that looks a little weird. Uh, but you, obviously you've got control over the tinting there. You've also got control over uh, how the foam is generated, including the color of the foam, the amount of foam that is created. So you can actually minimize the foam. You can turn off the foam if you really wish. But the amount of foam that is being generated as this, you've got control over that there. Uh, you've got control over how uh, refractive the water is. Like so, you can immediately see the effect there. You can also control the clarity of the water. And this is going to be mostly uh, when you start interacting with the lights in your scene, that will uh, really show the result there. So we see we've got the water coming in a lot faster because of, uh, I think that was the vertical effect here. That might be a bit of the flow speed and the steepness coming in. So as this water is coming down the slope, you can see here we've almost got a waterfall effect going on. Whereas we get down here in a more flat, you get more tranquil water. And again, at any time, you can come in and tweak the water's positions. Um, you've got spline control points over the general direction of the water. It's a pretty straightforward tool, but it's definitely a powerful one. All right, so that is the features for today. Uh, the one that we saw here for the creating the train. Of course, I will link both of these in the linked article down below. We've got the Godot height map plugin, a very powerful tool. Uh, and then we've got the water gen uh, Godot plugin, which is for creating those rivers as we saw right there. By the way, if you do download the uh, train one, uh, open up the uh, index.md file there and you're gonna find there's full documentation walking you through uh, how to set up pretty much everything there. It also is capable of doing some more stuff that I didn't do, uh, such as uh, placing um, billboarded uh, grass and, and uh, so on kind of effects into the world. I didn't actually like the end result of what I saw, so I would probably more likely place somewhat manually myself. Uh, but it does have the option there so you can paint grass and shrubs and so on into your world as well. Uh, so definitely a really cool set of projects for the Godot game engine. Um, that is the uh, Water Gen Godot and the Godot Height Map plugin. Let me know what you thought of these two comments down below and any other Godot plugin suggestions you've got. Let me know them. By the way, this was run on Godot 3.2.3, the most recent stable version as of recording. I 
don't know the deal for um, Godot 4 if support is there or not. I imagine they're going to probably have to be ported forward. But uh, the one being entirely GD script will make that really easy. This one is mostly GD script. There's a little bit of C++ in there as well. Uh, might have a bit more of a challenge, but uh, they should both work. Again, uh, if you are the author here, I would highly recommend adding a license because if you don't have a license, here, here's a suggestion to anyone. If you're making a commercial project and you're using some code that doesn't have a license, don't use that code. So always make sure there is a license of some kind. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.